Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joseph Cronin. I'm the director of the Leo Beck Institute London. This evening, we're delighted to be hosting a talk in collaboration with the Goethe Institute London, I think maybe the first, but hopefully the first of many. And our speaker tonight is none other than the esteemed German Jewish writer and activist Esther Discherite. Um, Esther Discherite is what you might call in German a Persönlichkeit, um, a public figure. Uh, a list of achievements in a career spanning four decades um, is legion and varied, and I will restrict myself to uh, mentioning just a few highlights. Um, Esther was born and grew up in Germany in the aftermath of the Holocaust. Uh, um, her mother was a survivor. We'll hear more about that this evening. Um, she studied in Frankfurt and Lyon uh, and initially trained to be a teacher. However, due to her participation in the political unrest of 1968, uh, she was prevented from teaching in public schools. And she then worked as a typesetter in print shops whilst nurturing a literary talent. It was during the 1980s that she became a full-time writer and has since published across a range of genres, novels, collections of poems, essays. Uh, and she's also written for theatre and for radio. Um, notable works include the novel Yomi's Tish, or known as Hable, uh, published in 1988, uh, Verin, published in 1992, um, the Morning of the Paperboy, a collection of short stories published in uh, 2007, and much else besides. Esther has been a fellow at the Moses Mendelssohn Center for European and Jewish Studies and writer in residence at Oberlin College and Conservatory in, I think, Ohio. Uh, in 2009, she was awarded Austria's prestigious Eric Fried Prize for her outstanding contributions to literature. Esther's poems, meanwhile, have appeared in publications around the world, uh, including in the Swiss newspaper book Neue Zürcher Zeitung, the magazines Odra in Poland, El Tabali in Argentina, and Pometeo in Colombia. Um, so without further ado, please join me in welcoming Esther Discherides. This evening is going to explore a subject of uh, very personal resonance, who to Oz Tritz. I'm mean, so proud of it's all about it's good to say a few words. Yeah, good evening, everybody. The problem is we have a second speaker and the first we had said it all on our what's that and probably as that. Uh, maybe just to 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 welcome you again from our side, as you said. Well, my name is Van Palman and I am the program director of the Goethe Institute here in London. And we had the privilege of having already um, a week ago at our uh, premise. So if you missed that, no chance. But tonight uh, we have you and had another privilege that um, I think a year ago um, we had a tour together through the exhibition that we will yeah. uh, speak about today. Um, by that time, it was in the Berlin Museum of um, Transport, a huge museum where you have all these cool classes. I'm sure there's something similar in London. And your uh, and there was your your exhibition, and we had to walk a little while because it was not, let's say, on the front legs of that museum, and that's another story that you might mention today. And if you came here to hear a reading session, I think I can tell you that um, it will probably not be a reading session, but more something like um, something like Adam, which you know, the rest of fun, or something like that. Um, and you're not doing this alone. Uh, I have a which also. Say hello, hello uh, to you, uh, John Ball, some uh, PhD student from Cambridge, from Jesus College, Cambridge. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and um, it happens by chance that the topic of your PhD piece is has to be right. And so here's as here to me. Thank you, Alan. Uh, me. Thank you very much, um, Leo Beck Institute, for uh, this cooperation and Senate House, uh, our first time here. So enjoy the evening. Thanks. Thank you.
that's the card one. Yeah, it's so I don't know. I know to everybody. Thank you for the invitation, whether they are back in Tutu. Well, in, in one or the other way that your back in Tutu became involved in my project, which you might not know in Langford, but um, I happen to have um, a former student of mine when I was teaching at the university for a client at Vienna. She did an internship at the Neo Bax Institute in New York and kept contact. And then I suddenly thought about running on their books that have killed her. And all of a sudden, she she reached out to me and say, Listen, I found some footage here. Did you know that your grandparents' uh, legends on here stored were well out there? So this enriched me surely very much. Well, getting to normal stories I hadn't known before. Why Fritz Kittel and who is Fritz Kittel? In 2019, I think you uh, realized that we just had the celebration for the 85th anniversary of the King of Arms Wars. And in 2019, uh, a group of the King of Arms brought King of Arms and the descendants uh, had the wish to travel to Europe and to see the places, maybe in a lot of time, where they, they met, that they also, their parents mainly seen the last time. And uh, at the same time, I have been uh, chair of contemporary poetics at NYU and was living together with a person named Lily Shahakar. We just had the pleasure to um, on panel with, it, with me at the Goethe Institute. And it turned out that she's president of the KMEA in their Trump's Art Association. It's really together the kingdom worldwide and the standards and yeah, reaching out. Um, and, and I figured out that Melissa was trying to get in contact with German institutions or German speaking institutions, or as far as I saw it in Austria and in, in, in Germany and did not really succeed. She doesn't speak German. And um, out of very principal reasons, um, she saw, she thought, and I thought it it should be um, it should be something that German National Railway or Japan should do, should pay for transportation between uh, Vienna, um, uh, Vienna, or Berlin. Berlin, Amsterdam, Hong Kong, and so on. It wasn't that much an amount of money, but other principles we thought this should be done. So I'm not being cool. It was really an uh, exhausting thing. Uh, who was responsible, who could do a decision, and uh, why is it such a big first? And in the end, it's a clean up the the uh, the group Melissa Hacker just arrived. So, hello. <laughs> uh, the, the group uh, went on the track for uh, German trade union for public services, um, hosted the group in Moret. And um, when we said goodbye, I somehow was left with the story. I asked the door and she was gone. George Abad already is the position um, yeah, for a story. And um, then I sat down with her and say, oh, this one now to go on my can I raise another question? And then it uh, asked her, that do you have a personal archive of your employees? And where could I find it? Because I was searching for this particular, as long as, as I had known his name in a way, but uh, not really, I was not really strange like this. I just, yeah, I just wanted to know, could I look it up? Could I see where he was? And, and uh, I was uh, obsessed by the idea uh, that Mr. Kindle must not have known that the two people, my mother and my own club, who both were as Jews persecuted in Berlin and had to go the underground, the survived with the elite that would not have known this, 
although he was very much involved in saving their lives. Because in 1944, it's a temper in a city named Zorau, at times Niederlausitz, to get it started, which where we see the truck when while they are in in the building, made for already invisible, for children's responsibility for food stands or whatever. Uh, to empty the bucket, out, she could she could not go anywhere. And said it when it start well, pretending it would be his niece to school in you know, at the time she was already set up. You know, she was born in nineteen thirty. So pretend that this looked to me, and that I knew there was light and liberation, and knew that it could change to another place uh, to handling and mission. And I somehow lost treasure early, so on. He might not have known that the two of them had made it. And I, I was always thinking um, that he should know it. Yeah. Um, and when the wall came down, I then had better access. File, yeah, and uh, again I saw his name mentioned in documents, applications. My mother had turned in for compensation. Um, well, from the, like my mother died very early, so uh, I was 15, 14 and starting, so I, I could not go back to her past or whatever. So, and um. Then the historian answered the note that there is no fine uh, original because we draw any thousand of alcohol except I mean at the end of the war they were about half a million employees. But yeah, no alcohol is kept. Like, so but nevertheless she wanted me to show her uh, what would I have in my hands. And one of these documents she just saw sliding. Where was um, a document where she could have had gone to the mayor of the city in Geringen and it had a, a stand on it. And I thought it looked like this. She, as an historian, immediately looked at the stand and said, Oh, this is Hessen. You can go there. It's not, it's not in Poland. You do not have to speak Polish to, to search for him. I said, Okay. Um, and, and what do you suggest I should do? And then she said, um, look it up in the photo. I said, yes. Then, it is a wonderful advice. Let's to the fact that um, I started ringing and fault uh, and then I did it. And I started reading there. And after 14 days, someone picked it up and say, why do you always call here? What what are you up to? They are calling me all the time. And I said, um, I want to talk to Sid Stephen. Of course, you're sitting in my head and the dining table. I did a French outfit in the past. And he answered, no, um, he, he was not a uh, great part. And he passed away. And they said, uh, was he a railroad worker? And then he said, yes. And then I said, okay, there are you. And it turned out to be well, this means um, friends are. Well, I asked him to sit down and told him why I was calling. Whether I called her, uh, that uh, his grandpa has hidden my mother and my eldest sister. We have a difference in the age of about 15 years. Um, on the uh, he, he was like, I'm um, sorry, and I thought I was saying, yeah, yeah, okay, great. He, we didn't. At least he didn't do something. You couldn't relax. It's something work out. So, and after a while, his daughter, um, Pritkill's daughter, rang me saying, What is this about? What is Peter Kittle taking in? Who oh, are you? What do you want? And then and I said, I do not want anything. I just want to tell you this fact. And then it turned out, and it's Tina Kitta, his daughter, one of his children, and also a grandson. They had known nothing about it. Just nothing. In the family, in Sweden, wasn't so. 
So I dropped this point on, um, the story of the Dutch Japan involves both himself again, saying, what should we do an execution on this? And I said, yeah, we can do it. And of course, now we decided to one of the people of my family, my nephew, my youngest daughter, and me together with um, the Fritz Tino daughter and Fritz Tino now, Renzo, we decided to travel to the places where it all had happened, or to, to try to find out uh, could we relay all this. Yeah, could we actually see the places. Like, and then in, uh, uh, we found a director again, which uh, accompanied us uh, with its kind of how with it. Well, we can did her videos. And right from the beginning on, I insisted saying, okay, I like to do this exhibition in order to honor this art. I think no one at her knew before who he was, why to seek out him. And I thought, I do not want to take part in this kind of musealization, which always so often happens if you start such a project or, or I, I can of, of, of the person. And, uh, and that's why I insist, and by the way, I'm not an historian, but I insist on talking about what we face now from the standpoint of today, contemporary um, contempt, I want the whole um, procedure being remaining contemporary and from this point I was relaying to the past. So, and this is for me also was very um, important because the question is talking about the ones where the ones if the witnesses are gone, yeah, uh, it's, it's reflecting to the question what do the other generations think? And um, and there is a lot in my view I, you cannot put in the drawers of the exhibition. Yeah, and and I do not have to prove the story because I have to know the story. I mean, it's not my duty to to say it's really true. I'm, I'm not a, on, on criminal court. Yeah, uh, so I, I can I choose to um, to go this way that the pieces of literature where well, they can be much more free to articulate our thoughts from today uh, is the base of the exhibit, and from there on, I add documents and I read photographs and I'm going to look. What or what is missing? What should be should be told? What can can be told? And what can, cannot be told? And yeah, now I'm here to present you because the exhibition itself is not available for you now, uh, but present or a uh, bunch of the seventeen pieces. You don't do that all. You are not very very curious yet. And so, um, yeah, so having this a little bit by what was sliding um, in front of your eyes, um, you can follow now the thoughts which came out searching for its killer person at the time. No one of us knew and we never personally get to know. And so now I have to introduce Johnny because he went really cool with that. Then it is that. That's number one. Reading really back and forth, study every page, waste paper, 
entries in a diary from a previous year. You probably couldn't get one for the current year. The page you keep wondering about is this page. He noted down and chances of my mother and my sister. Two all the addresses and he that rested. It's all one of the book about them. They are correct. My mother gave these same addresses in her conversation application from Lord's name and I did not Why did she do this? Why? Is it his hand writing? Is and writing? Is she writing this down in the Nazis are still in power? Is he writing it down in the French state after the liberation? My mother thought if no already you can make that is what is on a card. Was we get connected with those people and those addresses personally? Did she know them? Was she part of Wu after all? And why because the man who was threatened to denounce them when they are declaring in Zohar, Jadi, Ibad, the Tucker was on screen. Lastly, name a man from Berlin from one of those refuge letters. How does he know about him? What's this question about the play instead of be paid or I reproach? Could my mother have been carrying messages? Or know the play she knew something else that she might have finished? Had in word. Let's keep out your at least. 12 of the refuge addresses and the uh, and yes, and this. This is what finally uh, brings the family. When they end going through the documents he left behind. Text number two. Then let me talk. Did you talk a very funny part of person? That's how you are. And Stephen doesn't know what we are looking for. She pinches the file of family papers that are the ten week conversation. Robin Sherry. Papa was dead, put it in his publication. He said then he still used to be the it that never get the farm in the in back. I don't know, so it's Anastina. May need that either be another side, or that side would have wanted to inherit something of it. Wow. Not much to inherit. Not much of the star. No, we are all Darrods and Emirates with. She catches the tin cup, Shamu spans the golden expression. It's a in Gothic strip from wire porcelain. It's in a in his red mouth, kept on a shed in a living room. The same cups were also kept in the local high of museum in Shah, and they are evening where it exhibits with the weathers of the German extended in their face. But you see, whenever we got suddenly, he went to the car and held them. There'd been a guest room there, but Baru and a few liquids. And one sister, the young girls, was living in Deutsch. Father, slasher, and held their father. Their mother was dead, and their brother missed it as they must die. No time back from the war. I thought we could look for photos. Maybe could Stephen had gone back to the car, gave up my mother, or just with my sister, and maybe along while they all fixed it that there could be a foil of my sister. Nothing was found. Once again, he issued me. Well, it not Sometimes he liked around with the children. They all tried to touch the tips of their noses with their palms. Artists was giving her fat of laughing. The teacup was fallen over out of the tablecloth. There was another one pain, May of plus. X not words deep. Now say diary burden. Next summer, Alison. 
That's me. I was on my own children. On a trust. Yes, where the book I ate dot was there is kept. But rhythm like cars out to budget. Personal publication and your body. This book title it was in the father's it's not book. And as she had it immediately said, this could have been and father never break up. Never on the low circumstances did he ever read. When I created the book, I don't elaborate. He said outside in the street, I took sweet body flowers on that stock with me, a birthday present for a friend, and my wallet, you know, I'm cold. What you say, uh, Jack? With a fat fellow, and a jacket that I with a locker. Engineer, I told my life trouble with me. The charcoal moon wave is up to come back in. In no time, everyone's spending it again. I've got the volume spending all about books and notes and that cost. There is nobody here I can ask about the blood written book. Later, someone comes by order it. The book will arrive in such a much harder place. Or after one or two days, that I can't make it. From the store, it's not here. It's then climbs it. Rick, I see the notice. No, I didn't. It's in transit. The room has been like it. Now check with my second thing. Now, I'm sitting in 20 I'm imagining that it's good to take a look in its hands at home after work. Or the other thing was never one to read any books at all. Which was this book for them. I not wanting to read this book. The other ring brought palette and brindled paper with smell the gothic typeface. The book falls open. Stage setter. The F female rhythm. The 28 day cycle. Compasses soul equals life, spirit, feeling, sexuality, the multiplicity of life, but also its interior mutation, the remaking of the person. 14 days of high drive always alternate with the M male rhythm. The 23 day cycle compasses the male drive for action. The P primitive rhythm, the 18 day cycle, is as nine days of high drive and then nine days of low drive. Between the high and the low, we find a minus curve, the half periodic day. And in contrast, between low and high, zero point i.e. the beginning of a new period, the stronger minus curve, the periodic day. I'm not sure any bit that page way to even in the Lord talk. I jump up pages, page 20. Health and sickness, fertility, conception, love, and marriage. I count the literature from right to left. We from left to right. That brings me to a way that makes that with or without the lifted corner that no star. With the white of the doll words, whether from rest which was encoded with page turns. We can eat it and peanut, it's not so. And then roll circumstances, you already know it. It's a big beat, no dog, ever. When you're chump. Text number four. My mother is sitting at the kitchen table. 
On the table legs, the paint has flaked off in places. The white has yellowed. The table had eight legs, so she could stow the dirty dishes inside the embedded wooden frame which concealed an enamel bowl. This inset could be pulled out and pushed back like a drawer. She often sat here drinking a cup of coffee. The paper filters were made by Melita, sometimes together with Valtraud. Valtraud was the best friend from school of my sister Hannah Lorda, my oldest sister, who had left home already and was studying languages somewhere far away. When the two of them talked, sometimes I was supposed to go out and, well, play. Maybe I stayed standing behind the half-closed door, or sat on the floor in the corridor. It must have been on one of these days that I first had the name Fritz Kittel. Text number five. I visited the State Archive of Berlin. The files of the Berlin Brandenburg Department of Finance were held there. 1990s, after the fall of the war. Was my research in the course of academic interest? No, it was personal, very personal. I was fulfilling Eleni's wish. Like my mother, she was from Berlin, and like my mother, she had survived as a Jew. Her friend Felisa hadn't. She had asked me to search for the truth about her fate. Day after day, I had come back, getting bolted down in those files. A caretaker denounced a Jewish family. A neighbor let it be known that she was interested in the flat whenever they would go away at last. And yes, the electricity company cut off the supply. So... Are you making progress? The archivist asked. I looked at him. He let me make copies. I came back, wanted to leave, never come back again. Halfway out, facing the door, I turned back once again and said, But if you could find these papers, then my grandparents must have a file here too. And my mother, and her first husband, and my oldest sister, the child of that marriage. I said their names. He looked them up in a big fat book. They're listed here, in the book of the Jews of Berlin. They're dead. I said, no, they're not dead. I can witness that. The archivist said that meant he could delete their names from the book of the murdered Jews of Berlin. I said, yes. He said, when have I even once been able to do this before, in all these last decades? Actually, never. He fetched a pen. Text number six. The one-room tailoring workshop. A woman was employed to work there, a Christian. When my grandparents have to go into hiding, she takes them in with her. Unfortunately, this working woman is sometimes, as they say, not right in the head. Then she shouts obscenities about Hitler up and down the stairwell. That's why they couldn't stay there, wrote my grandfather. I can't remember whether that was the Leo Beck report in New York that Katarina had found for me. That meant that somebody called the Gestapo and drew their attention to the family in Heidi. My grandparents had to get away. I would like to know her name. The woman's name is not recorded anywhere. Text number seven. Sonia's story puzzled me for a long time. At Thanksgiving ten years ago, at my nieces in Chicago, we were sitting round the table and waiting for the turkey to be served when the phone rang. Someone picked up 
and passed the receiver to Hannah Lauder. It was one of those devices, out of fashion now, which always sits on a charging station. It's for you. I heard her irritated phrases, fragments of words. Oh my goodness, that's wonderful, and where are you? And you, what, New York? I don't believe it. But still she said she had to, hun to hang up, the turkey, the family, and hung up. Who was this person in their 80s from New York she was talking to? She was part of the household, says Hannah Laura, and nothing more. There are photos of a girl of about eight playing with the little three-year-old girl. Sonia was a child who'd been taken into their care by my grandparents Berthold and Rosa. Her parents lived in Zorgal, a good way from Berlin. They traded in textiles and were hard-working business people, both of them. From the end of 1938, the children could no longer attend state schools. The parents gave their children, also including Sonia's brother Heinz, over to foster parents. The brother that way, the sister to my grandparents in Berlin, who looked after her well and made sure she could attend the Jewish primary school nearby. English was her favourite subject. The school was in the synagogue in Reichstrasse, and Sonia could walk there from the grandparents' home, until she changed schools later and took the tram. She came home about five after a long school day. Sonia's son lives in New York with his mother. Oliver found him. Find them both. He's forever finding undiscovered members of the family. Where was Sonia when our grandparents went to legal? Jay says he knows. His grandmother, Ida Goldberg, had come to Berlin and taken little Sonia away with her. When I came out of school, she was there. We have to go, right now. Sonia didn't want to, asked why. Her mother said she'd tell her once they got to the railway. The schools were closed by the National Socialists in 1942. Sonia says she was sitting on a farm in Zorgal by her mother. She has fond memories of our grandparents. And then that journey, that journey to Zorgal in 1943, where mother and child Hella and Hannelore Zacharias in December register under false names as living at Schlossplatz Prey with Ida Goldberg, but can't stay there, so they deregister. Then at Siedlungsweg 2 with the Schallert family, then in Heise at Lazarett Weg 1 with Fritz Kittel. Did they get to know Fritz Kittel through the Goldbergs? We send us on your photos. A photo of Fritz Kittel when he was younger. Her son Jay says he doesn't want to upset her. Whenever she's asked about those times, she gets sick. I ask her about her favourite teacher in the school in Reichstrasse, her favourite subject, and whether she has a best friend. Her son will pass these questions on to her in English. He has no jump. He will do it, he says, when he thinks it will be all right. You can talk much. Takes never night. They don't talk much like it's peace and quiet, and so it's Manfred who likes his peace and quiet himself. But this watch, he always set it on him. Did you only wear it on Sunday? The gold pocket watch with the chain. I had to ask more. It was cool weather we about surely to be taken to work with them every day with this little railway station out building where still to bury the employees of Deutsche Bahn, many of the high brown that is with their death. Probably nowadays no children bring them their lunches from home around midday. That is Tina, and Tina is finally for six years old. She left and even sent off on her own with a large box. 
Maar ik ga nog maar wel even op. Ik ga ik een Ja, het is een in de kaning. Ja, het is met het scanning van waiting birds. Build into the floor inside. We can avoid the debris and also find the tool for cleaning train backwards. An old showroom, as old as the banner. In the head in its house, and a railway worker sat slash the house thing. He got caught up in a world display. The ice barn be peerage on railway with liable dispatch for the rotation time. When he arrived here, near him, I knew his late file. The jewels of the other emerald already grown, already departed to men's and murder. His job was hard, lap, and shut knock on board Lowe's conductor. On the papers, it's written, Pad of Val and shut knock, no dick conductor. Then, what was it she was loading in the last weeks of the war? Why were he transferred here to this spot on the Vera? I never heard before. The American said, and the Cena's mother had sweep out their bed underground, like all the remaining year. The part of Imperial German gold would be hidden very near, near, near Madcats. Until when? Until when? And what? Until the Nazis could arise again from the dead and dig it up. The Americans found it, then you'll find it. Winter Power, Mine and Factory. The Armaments Company now can't even start in their own way, Richard. But people were still needed to dispatch friends, check loads and labeling, and release them onto the Linus Farmer. That's where Richard's transported onwards. Let's get a road in his notebook. I am war. That way the war will end more quickly instead of taking a fight. When we slew it down there, factory security people came straight up. They want to die, Hector. Next number 20. Made it from the mayor of Pierre Dandy in November 9th. 2031. The first time ever the citizens eat a theory we see such lives like a bulb. During the November 1938 poll, there were attacks on the last Jewish ceremony in Yevian, the Bashavak family. The Bashavak themselves had already been slain to walk the Frankfurt. Especially since the Norton's had been expelled from the state primary school and had to attend the designated Jules class in Baha. During the prolonged use of Baha's shop was attacked, the doors, windows, and his play windows and the walls around the courtyard in Storo. Jules at Baha was taken into protective custody. And then by a hustle to the Bogen by the concentration camp. In mid December 1938, after the train back from Bogen was, the Samin ran it to Frankfurt, where he was in a Baha died on 29th March 1914, possibly as a consequence of the concentration camp imprisonment or due to a greater spell. In Gestapo custody. He was buried in the Jewish cemetery in that white house. His wife and their two daughters were departed to the gathering lanes and died. Of the Jewish people who were born and the old John resident in Nevingham, the following died during the National Socialist period. You will set him by half. 1880. And then Rosa, Rosa, by half. 
It's a more sentence for victims of political, racial, and religious persecution from greater as certification. The above name is a member of the group of persons who were persecuted by the Nazis in the past years. Please support the owner of this syndication, protection, and help. This is a paper my mother received. What do the papers look like that people today who have managed to save themselves receive? Are there any use to those who receive them? What use? Hopefully they get such papers. Text number 12. We travel back there again. I've not forgotten the bunker. How could I forget the bunker? It was a sunlit day, and Ernestina had said, What are you after there? There's nothing there. Still. I'd sprained my foot, and my daughter had to help me jump over the little ditch that separated the hill from the road. Little bushes, nettles, and thorny brambles. We'd gone the wrong way. We went back again. This is where it must have been. There was nothing to remember the place, as if it was now disowned, a couple of metres beyond the place name sign. We, we looked through railings, downwards. This must have been the exit once. Buried under soil thrown over. Hard to believe that the locals had been assembled here, probably pressed close together. It was like a dungeon now. Herr Kittel had legalized them, had the two of them declared husband and wife, and my sister Hannah Laura his daughter. That has to be the reason why they went into the bunker with everyone else. To stay outside, would have attracted attention. Everyone wanted to find safety from the ones who were coming. The American troops were already audible. The tracks of the tanks were churning through the soil. She must have got herself and her child up close to the bunker door, pushed forward through the others when she heard them getting closer. So she told it. She managed to open the bunker door. Behind her, the people were whispering, No, no, the enemy's out there, don't go. She took the child, eight-year-old Hannah Lauder, firmly by the hand, and pulled her outside with her. The child was scared of the noise of the approaching tanks. I can't see what direction they came from. Just the neat road now. A fast, well-built road. No signs of broken tar bag. She must have pulled her child more tightly to her, said, No, those aren't our enemies. They're from where Aunt Elsa went. Text number 13. Wintershaar, the people call the bunker. 
where a sign was attached in the name of the successor company, Carl and S, telling those without permission that they must keep out. Seven potash mines in Hesse, slave laborers and concentration camp prisoners. Was how it was, says the calmed S media spokesman. No mention of the people worked to death underground, who while they were still alive, were brought up briefly once a fortnight into the daylight like dogs and then taken back down. They lived below ground. And then, death marches. Was how it was. How it was, says the media spokesman. Nothing precise is known. Sadly, sadly. No signboard, no clue, no memorial. An internal study we're not allowed to see. The water, the river Vera, is cleaning again. That was us, says the media spokesman. The miners' national folk song, the Steigerlied, they all sing that on the way down and on the way up at get-togethers, and their families too. A saint keeps watch down there. She keeps them safe, they say. Sacred mass at mining ships. And then, Glück auf, the Steigerlied refrain. Luck coming up. That's traditional here. Once, Karen used to have that fear, that fear of the women for their men, if something happens underground. Some grow old early. Manfred refused to go down. Not for anything in the world, he says. But the money draws the young men. Now women too. Shift bonuses. Castle, Hamburg, the 26th of October, 2021. Results for the third quarter of 2021. Exceptional raw materials, price environment, favours strong financial result. Winters Haldea, Europe's leading independent natural gas and oil enterprise, has published figures for business operations in the third quarter of 2021. Isn't that a bit, I mean, back then? What back then? led by a prominent industrialist of the Third Reich. Well, it was the same everywhere. When I met Guy Stern, I knew nothing about the huge importance of this output for the war. He's a professor now, was able to save himself as a 16-year-old, tries to get his parents out, fails. He keeps explaining again and again how he actually might have succeeded. He's in Detroit now. Then he talks about the Ritchie boys. He was part of that troop. I take the DVD back to Germany. After watching the film, I understood that he had come to Germany as part of the Allied army. They spoke German. They'd operated behind the lines at D-Day. And then afterwards, they carried out in the interrogations. Here, very close to here, he was stationed in Bad Hersfeld. So he was among those my mother and sister walked towards. Straight away, within days, she was with them. She'd learned English, believed in the liberation. Here it is on paper. Profession, translator. I write a mail to Guy Stan. You liberated my mother, Hella and my sister Anna Laura. Guy replies, you made my day. Text number 16. Aunt Elsa, who had been removed from her job in the Reichstag offices as un-Aryan under the civil service law early on, Aunt Elsa, who I saw on a motorbike, always on holiday somewhere, with women friends, with an exceptional reference from the director of the Reichstag. She had never stopped trying, after she fled, to secure entry visas for her brother and his family. 
for the United States, for Bolivia. She paid and paid and sent money by circuitous routes, gathered information, earned little for herself in exile as a secretary, knew that her mother, her aunt, wrote letters to the tracing service, would send packets to Thuringienstadt, no answer, no. Wrote to these and to those, begged, threatened, paid, in vain. And when the child was still no more than three years old, when there was still hope yet, it was Elsa who, from somewhere, from Switzerland, from England, sent her something for her birthday with a dress for the girl and a toy. So that's the way they walk towards the American tents and said, we're Jews, help us. The handwritten note has been kept, written by the commander marching through there. It declares the two to be under the protection of the Liberation Army. They moved to Philip's tile under their real names for the first time and in their own flat. Paradise began, said my sister. And yet, So much, Esther and uh, Johnny, for a fascinating or provoking presentation. Um, we have some time for questions. Um, obviously, those of you in the room, feel free to raise your hands. If you're watching on Zoom, if you could uh, kindly type your question into the chat, and we will read it out. There is a microphone that can work its way around the room. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. Um, I was going through the Zoom. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for the, for the beautiful reading as well. I was really interested at the beginning when you talked about resisting. I can't remember if you said the musealization or the museumization of the subject. And I, I was really curious to hear about the exhibition that you worked on at the Transport Museum in Berlin and how you were thinking about this in, in relationship to curation. Uh, could you repeat the last second? Were you working as a curator on the exhibition? Yeah, so was as you were working with different curatorial strategies, were you thinking about this very problem or this tension about the way in which the museum objectifies history or historical subjects? Uh, yeah. Uh, we Proponate uh, you heard us reading the text on the Jewish people in Ireland, for example. And uh, I, I mean, well, but it's you, you're going to think differently to this. Why are we including this in the exhibition? Why are mentioning this? It's about the skittle and two involved. Or we need help. And I said, no. Wait, go to known to this here, to this place. And of course, we need to know what at the time when they brought, what, what was already was, was happening here. So we cannot exclude it. I will not never exclude this. Now, you may think it doesn't belong to the story. I think it belongs. So, I insist that, that this becomes part of the insults of the videos in town that when the memory mm -hmm. uh, the city is done and, and if we went there then or um, other um, other questions like if if I talk about the liberation yeah um, we have the way a way to think like I don't know, there, there were tents coming in, like described 
soldiers on top. And maybe, maybe because of the military. Maybe. I said, no, I'm not going for this kind of images we saw for, for ages. And I insisted to fill a whole dawn with um, Hershey chocolate in the brown one, the very dark brown one. Yes, this is with the chocolate and so on. And with so for me, this was totally important. And the whole door filled with this chocolate, and people who are putting it out are welcome to take it or not. What's that? So we have refilled it a bit with the bottle. So it's also a little bit active. Um, another question you saw this out there on the screen who is the uh, owner painting the, the Sosi Fat? And um, this is a very peaceful image. Yeah. Peaceful, but at the same time, it's also mentioned it's an after back. So it's even in regards to a group who, uh, for whose part in the liberation often was neglected a lot on the summer, looking like this. Um, so, and in the with with the literary literature text, I I was able to uh, express um, what is what is has already taken place in between and after this waves of identity and and interpretation and and uh, public discoveries and in a way also capturing the subject and the people who were the ones originally by its terms. So I can express how I feel, yeah, and uh, what what already um, was was in gone into my mind because of this and not because I just stick close to to the objects of the material and what the people say and it's been insisted all the time doesn't read and all yeah. So um it, it with these texts I can um also insist um that my work is not to be done to, to make a problem story complete. So I uh, expose the whole, the not knowing, the, the, the mission he did even. I mean, there were documents by her. I had no one before, but I, I think I did not really understand. After decades, I'm sure of it. For example, then one document, it isn't here. My mother also, it was person from the Jewish organization is coming to her because she had, was getting embarrassed, she couldn't go there. So he was taking notes what she was saying. And there is one sentence she never ever repeated anywhere else. It was the sentence also mentioned again, Fritz Kittel, and then saying, uh, but often, people who who were helping us, uh, well, it, uh, I mean, they were blamed us, they were exploited us. So, and often I did not have only to pay material; I had to pay also in material. So, and for for ages, I overlooked this sentence. Yeah, and and then all this. All of a sudden, I saw it again, and I said, okay, I just recently read the book by Emmanuel Borilla, My Way from uh, the Congo to Europe. And he describes his life as this, someone who was fighting for democracy in the Congo, and he was persecuted and had to flee through the desert. And he's describing what happens when he crosses borders. And he is accompanied by other women who also are of the flight. And he's describing um, how he was full of shame, describing that he saw what the women especially 
so we can trace and we can wait through and put a belt. And I said, okay, this is so currently still important. I will put this document, my mother's document, in the drawer. Yeah. Um, because there is this angle to the situation of women on site today, like at the border and border environment. So, and so in a different aspect, I try to, um, to, to, to make this possible to think of today in, in the opening in Kempton, for example, where the exhibition was opened at the Smart Museum. Uh, I reached out to, or uh, he said something like a city and society of our city. And uh, our is very much um, suffering from right-wing extremism. And so I, I wanted to just to give those who oppose it the greatest stage also through the exhibition. And I reached out to them and two uh, women from Afghanistan, I think when we saw the phrase in the text where it was written, the schools were closed and no one could go to school anymore. And immediately, I think today, it was Afghanistan, uh, girls and women. Um, two women from Afghanistan dared to go up and take the microphone and fall for the first time. And, and they saw what would happen to them after they were reached Germany and, and how difficult for them it was to, to deal with what bureaucracy and neglecting the real names of the children and uh, whatsoever. So, um, and um, the, it, this event also was integrated in the Jewish country. And the organizers later said, well, they had never thought of this way to talk about the past. And, and what would happen, the result was the and um, the woman who was the uh, in the, uh, the president of the Jewish community in Paris, she was there, and other representatives were also there. So at least these two women now got on with the thing they had to deal with all the time. Yeah. And um, so I, I, reach out to, to different aspects or how do you how do you talk about someone you don't know so i follow the family's narration but there is still yeah then i thought okay well here it was so important what he worked for yeah his work day but we didn't have photos actually where you were seen work it. Yeah, but what we have is that you can show photos by the journal right away. You saw that this Henry thing yeah, carrying the, the, the stuff. So this was the kind of work he needed to do. So you get an idea what he his day like was like. And, and he was he was not turning a lot, never and it stayed like this. And and also those questions this page number 20 or thing, yeah? I think we are full of the idea that there is a group of resistance, the group, yeah? And ideology, maybe communistic, maybe socialistic, maybe maybe religious-wise, maybe Christian, yeah? So the group can do the resistance. The group is strong. It didn't work. There was no group. It wasn't, yeah? And, and Although you can know it, slip away from time to time again, seeing, uh, raising the question, what does it mean to type responsibility, the personal responsibility? His colleagues did not do it. They were in masters involved in the deportation, um, yeah, persecution of Jews. But money with this, and no one of them was ever accused or brought to try. No one, really no one. So, and at the very, very same time, this man, we do not know anything about him really. 
he he, he was the, the feminist says no he was not religious no he rich not he was not into some ideology he just did it we don't even know whether they liked each other yeah he had a fiance at the time the fiance knew that he took in the two so the fiance did not come at the so he took the responsibility. Hannah Arendt is all the time talking about, I think. And uh, these are uh, messages in my view of today, already of today. Yeah. And I uh, hopefully I then I remember. Yeah. We come this way down, so start with Frank. Sorry, big I don't mind. It's no, no, it was her. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Esther, for your really um, inspiring talk. Just like all your writing, um, it leaves one with the with the right questions. I think um, I have a question about the the practicality of the exhibition, as I haven't seen it yet. How did you um, bridge visually that you actually had two narratives about the skittle, if I understood correctly, the one that that was in your mind that you were exploring? And the one that the family had. He touched upon that a little bit now, but how did you translate that into the exhibition space? And um, a second question would be, how did you work with the footage? Because you mentioned that um, Gerhard Schick was, was filming. Um, did you turn this into um, footage for the exhibition or did you turn it into a documentary? What what happened with that yeah. audiovisual material? Yeah. Um, and I answered directly. Also, um, the exhibition included 10 pieces of short video still buds. So three minutes up to five. You could press the button and then decide what do you want to see. You want to see how family members and we are traveling in Jari looking for exactly the address where it had happened. So one thing. Uh, second, there is an interview with my nephew, uh, a son a son of my eldest sister, and he is talking about uh, what he felt when he first saw the files and opened it up and how, how they got to him. Also, uh, an interesting question. Um, then there is an um, interview only on Anastina, the daughter, that's Kittel's daughter, and um, that's, that's, uh, and the daughter and I were talking about what had she known? What does she not know? And uh, I mean, what, what is her approach toward it? And another one of is uh, the splinter is completed from my daughter. So this is the third generation. She visited all by herself, all places of refugee she knew of in Berlin, and photographed them and made her own work out of it. It's totally out of works. There is only from being seeing, seeing today, yeah, the like how it looks today. You go there, you stay in front of something, you know something in the past was there, but it's not, it's not spoken about. Yeah, you just see it. And uh, and there was very very important. We found footage. Mm -hmm. Then it been an Israeli filmmaker who once wanted to do a movie about my sister. And this was in 2006, and she did uh, a lot of interviews with her, but uh, she never released the, the movie. So it was the number of her. And Gellert Schick was able to find her, was able to convince her to contribute these pieces. And astonishingly for all of us, my sister extensively talks about Mr. Kettler. She never did this. Uh, in front of us, yeah, but as well she did it, so this is part now of the exhibition toward, of course, very, to me, also very um, important because um, it, 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 for me, it's a document proving the um, integrity of Ms. Takichi. I wouldn't have done the whole thing if I would have had any doubt about him, and yeah, and the, the way she's talking, the way she's mentioning him, 
before they clear this was all very, very uh, peaceful and very careful. And now it's now um, then word about it. And she told her of this link out to some of his Sundays so she could meet other children. She enjoyed it, you know, so uh, so I mean did, did I miss the question? No, love it. Okay, thank you. Okay. When uh, the lady uh, behind me. No, that's what you did. Sorry. Okay. Uh, um, as one who, who actually uh, has seen your exhibition, I can say that you can also read it, besides this personal story that you're talking about mainly, about the role of the uh, German railway during um, the Second World War. Uh, and about um, its role in in this death machinery of the Holocaust, um, and you said that um, your co-curator actually was a historian from Deutsche Bahn. And my question is: um, uh, Was there <clears throat> any point during your curatorial process where you had the impression um, that uh, Deutsche Bahn wants you to display certain things or not to display certain things? in a way, um, I will avoid the word of whitewashing because the documents you can see are, are, are terrible if they are invoicing, for example, the Ministry for the transport of 7,000 Jews from, from Frankfurt to, to, to Minsk or whatever. But um, was there, was there, do you have the impression that they, um, in a way, um, want to control it at the end because they partly financed it, as far as I know? Yeah, well... Yeah, yes and no. I mean, they, there was a, a vivid interest uh, to to show they they would not avoid to deal with the past, but how to handle this, how to move forward. It. Uh, for example, that 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 no one was ever accused or led me to the suggestion to say, okay, what person I mean representing of Don Giovanni Fan, why was was accused? Let's show uh, what was turned into the trial. And uh, it's, it's, it's Soviet. Much of this is, for example, the trial against the perpetrators of the so called National Socialist Underground Crimes, which recently was in 2013 in Munich. Uh, it's like myth. And, but this guy was like this. So I said, okay, let's show this. And at the end, he got away with it, um, pretending to be a health sweeper. And then the type of 25 years the longer. And this was the only one ever uh, brought up in this position. And this means, of course, that after 45, maybe the railroad workers could go back their jobs and it also means that corporate identity work and of course one would know from the other that he had been running this and this back so no one broke the silence one thing they are, we had arguments a lot for example this thing with us to why why do i want to include the head and angels I couldn't discuss it. For me, it was totally clear I would not, the editor would not mention that I could it. Or there is another draw. I totally um, put together the stories of the family of those who did not make it. So the whole draw is completed with the East Night. And we had a difference, a lot of difference about this. Why do you know it? Then two of them made it. And the great parents also made it. They yeah, that is not the story. Yeah. This the story with the story is, at the same time the others did not need it. And and I'm not going to tell just this how this that heartbreaking story of how once a soul is dead out. They belong. They belong in the story of the two, and they still belong to my story, to my daughter's story. 
They won't get away. It's just they don't get away. That's it. So we had a huge differences about that and, and how to um, how to dis- describe the story. For example, I was not interested in when was the person born, when did she go to which job, when did she get married, and how many children did he have, and whatever. There's no way I'm interested in it. Um, and I thought this, for me, it's totally boring. <laughs> Even I was a very good guy. <laughs> so, um, in the, of course, I existed how important these kinds of literature are. Um, because I think otherwise you, um, you, you, you cannot even, um, have enough to judge. Yeah. For example, the question of integrity, it is there, of course, uh, of course I want to, you know, of course I want to do that. Yeah. I, we had a lot of difference about this, which on one hand belonged to the fact that as a historian was, uh, used to to see other other objects more important and uh, what i also did not agree to was that there was the deep wish to to end three other lives of other names why do we do that yeah they were they, they all also got agreed and, and there was a great work i involved i mean what is the the message there were a lot of that thing, all of them. I mean, it's not true. So, this is, there were surely ten, tensions, uh, great tension, and, and surely also there was this problem in the German Railroad Company um, in a way. Yeah, of course, can can they lose it? It's, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's a document saying we come to task with the but on the other hand, they now employ more than 30,000 people. And even if you only said of the um, effects and efforts within uh, the employment uh, group, it's, it's fabulous. Yeah, they all have got to read it. They all got to um, the, the education that people were in education. Uh, we're brought there. They could go there. And um, in 27, it, it was just till January, the end of January, the exhibition was in Nürnberg at the um, Museum der Deutsche Bahn. And at the weekend, there were 3,000 people attending. There's a lot. I, I was not too fond of to have it often in only the interior Eisenbahn, railway, something. But on the other hand, there were people coming which did not come because of the topic. Yeah, they came because of you know, this fascination of um, yeah machine, being machine. Oh, yes. Yeah, um, and and yeah, it is. I um, mean, Johnny was also there, the opening, and uh, it functioned like this. You had you got this. 80 folder, yeah, and um, the texts were um, it related to some object. So if you pull out a drawer, it might say on the side, number 14. Then you go and look where it's number 14, in which drawer, and then you will um, organize your own little book. So like this, and by the way, I like to make sure that this translation was done by Tom Chesman uh, from once we had COVID, or uh, which is a honor to be. And um, yeah, and sure that it's. I want um, have given even more space for more um, attention to that very teaser. Um, yeah, yeah, you have to work it out in such collaboration. <laughs> and it's, for an artist, for an artist, it, it's not really funny to work with such a huge institution. 
if we're finding interest, very, very willingly. They were just not used uh, to to think in in the kind of uh, and decisions of decision making and also practical. I mean, not when we would set up the dates where the exhibition would be shown already two years in advance, at least. Wow. But they were a huge organization, they had a lot of money. Well, so they would put it as a fully, they would find the place. But it's maybe uh, not the best. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they, they, yeah. So, but yeah, and I also did not allow the DDR. I mean, back to your question, that the Deutsche Bahn captured this, this editor in this book, that's Hitler, and that publishes only about my son, only about her. They, 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 George, they, they are in their, uh, this one was good in him. They wanted to do it. They wanted to leave out the literature. They wanted to leave out the whole survival skin and uh, from French killer only, uh, just then his, his bottle, you know, that now, and told me that's about it. As well, which speaks for a lot of attention, but yeah. So just to add other because just with that stuff mentioned there in the exhibition and Skype you asked about what the what you buy what and what would be there in the opening. Um or when the the, the no. seat were you oh, were you not uh, or uh, so down was the down uh and yeah they missed this stuff. Um but the the, the CEO of Richard Barn was uh and he gave a speech at the opening. And then I remember it was almost a year ago, so I didn't quite remember. But he's, I think he mentioned, like, when he was talking about Pitts Kidley, he mentioned Oscar Schindler or something like that in the same kind of the same sentence. It was very much a sort of like, look, we had a, the Bush one and it's been like, sort of, yeah, 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 Deutsche Wahl have any theories about his motivation for this people? Well, they have known when the whole route of his character got the same. All research which I could found, which we couldn't found, is, is presented. There's no more. And uh, my daughter, Lady, was the one who got all the Brazil shine, as though well, which all the Germans did out after 45, that they men about this and this and that. And and no, his fire is, is so anti as I feel it. To compare him with other railroad workers, it's wonderful. But it's on the quote. Yeah, and what's maybe I like to add. Um also at the opening of, of the exhibition, there was not this idea that someone from the factory should talk. Yeah. It was the representatives for Felix Klein, for the German Parliament, you know, railroad worker company, she and that are wrong for them. But later, the next time the exhibition was in uh, Hebingham and in Hamlet, and all of the room bad, and then uh, it's still sold her spoke herself. Yeah. At uh, the last station in Lugba, eating by my sister, my younger sister, it's still an older one as I am. She also dared to see, which I'm fond of. Her. Yeah. But they did it this way. Yeah. It's the uncle following is. Do we know that? I mean, prepare the flow of those four other eats, but not for other. And then we go back. But we set back. I'd have been learned, but you know, it's especially ritualized set of production. I did a bunch of you know, by the way, if you like to get some, two of them are in English. It says Ian Gilbreth from the art artificial person. And um, if 
if someone likes to, to get hold of front of the images, you can just get that here. Uh, I, I prepared this for an event where we could not even show this because there was no screen. And uh, I thought I'd bring it over in more like half of so I was just seeing are there any questions on Zoom chat? Okay. Well, no, we are just to time. So thank you again, Esther, for her wonderful performance this evening. Thank you for your questions. We have some drinks and refreshments afterwards. If you go down the corridor and turn right through the long hall, it's just at the back. Hope to join you there shortly, but please uh, join me again in thank you. Thank you for all the and thank you for all the and thank you for all the